Professor Clevers, thank you very much for, for spending a little bit uh, of your precious time to, to answer our question. Um, you are the president of the Netherlands, the Royal Netherlands Academy of Arts and Science, and you are professor at the University of Utrecht. Yes. Uh, in a couple of minutes, you are going to give your keynote uh, lecture uh, here at the, the EMBO meeting. Can you give us a little bit of a preview and, and explain what is the link between stem cell biology and cancer? I think that's actually the core of my talk. Uh, my lab has been working simultaneously on cancer and on stem cells of the gut. And actually, the reason that we could find the stem cells is because we got so heavily interested in, in, in the cancer cells of the gut. We think the biology of the two are essentially the same. Mm -hmm. so, so does it mean that inside every tumor there are stem cells that uh, keep dividing and, and uh, are staying undifferentiated and, and create the tumor? Yeah, that cell would be called the cancer stem cell. Mm -hmm. There's actually two issues. The first one is where do cancers arise? And we think they often arise in stem cells and they keep many of the uh, characteristics of the original stem cells. And then the second aspect is in established tumors are there cells that behave like stem cells? And that's, I guess, a very likely hypothesis that many people are working on. So, so th this is in a way the, the bad side of stem cells that create tumors and, and, and go out of regulation, but there is also a good side in, in terms of, of regenerative uh, uh, medicine. Yeah, so if you manage to tame stem cells, if you first of all identify them in tissues and then know how to manipulate them, grow them uh, in vitro in the lab, that would then allow you to use these stem cells in a good way actually to, to repair tissues. And that's something that I'll put a lot of emphasis on in my talk as well. So you are saying when you put the cells in, in, in culture, so when put in appropriate condition, they even uh, form self-organized mini organs, mini pancreas, as we discovered in a, in a paper in the Emerald Journal, mini guts and mini brains. I think we, we had a talk yesterday from Jürgen Knoblich. Yeah. So what does it really tell us about the mechanisms of, of development and what are potential applications of these organoids? Yeah, so what we learned from all these observations, there are many, I think another one is the retina that forms from, uh, from ES or IPS cells, uh, is that actually tissues are far more self-organizing than we believed. I guess I and many other people in the field would have believed that um, embryos develop in this very special way, and the only way to make the tissues correctly is to start from a fertilized oocyte and go through all these moves and, and make an embryo. Uh, it turns out that you can take a single, in our case, gut stem cell, have it cultured in the right conditions and it makes a mini version of the gut. So it has all the information and it doesn't need signals from the outside apparently. Yeah. So, so these findings are, are incredibly fascinating to, to see a, a brain developing in the dish. Um, and, and the potential uh, is fabulous. But you also published recently um, an opinion article in the EMBO journal uh, on the need of a very clear legal regulation on stem cell based uh, therapies. So what are the what are the forces here at, at, at stage and, and, and uh, what are the potential risks? Well, there are great potential risks. Uh, this is what we call in the stem cell field unproven therapies. There are many, many companies around the world that use stories around stem cells to uh, essentially um, uh, persuade chronically ill people usually that have a bad disease that are no longer treatable by the standard methods to fly to a country that has a less well regulated uh, uh, healthcare system and be treated with any kind of stem cell that they claim cure usually every disease you can think of. This is very dangerous. Uh, it's a very uh, vulnerable population of patients. These are patients that are going to die. Uh, it costs a lot of money. They probably get are worse off by these treatments than they would be without. So this is really a big threat. Mm -hmm. and, and so stem cells, in a way, <coughs> do, do, do legal and lawyers really understand what they are? Because in a way, it's an intermediate between a medicine that you inject and, and a transplantation. And I think these are very different legal objects. Yeah. Yeah, so th I think one of the problems that we run into is that it has been allowed for a long, long time to uh, transplant blood, blood transfusions and bone marrow. And what these clinics often do is they take their therapies in the context of mesenchymal stem cells, for instance, which often come from bone marrow. And then there's not so much in their way to use this in clinics, mm -hmm. although it's unproven what they're doing exactly. Uh, so probably a well-regulated country would get in their way. 
with a less regulated country will just look at it as if it's a bone marrow transplantation. Yeah. So I think it's up to us, to the scientists, to uh, explain to all parties involved what exactly stem cells are and how to use them safely and, how, uh, and, and what to avoid. Thank you very much uh, again and we certainly look forward to, to learning much more during your talk. Thank you. Yeah.